The main reason for supporting research at EU level is to uh, support competitiveness, but also to improve the quality of life of European citizens. My, my proposal just right now is uh, that ES tools and, uh, and also your stem cells and uh, a few other uh, networks get together to organize a meeting table. So we have been doing this by funding collaborative research. This is really a key element of our research um, funding. Um, applicants must get together with uh, other European uh, researchers from all over Europe. Uh, they can be from academia or they can be from industry, but they, they should work together to present uh, ambitious research projects that we can fund. This European consortia are really a very good idea, actually, to, to get young people together all over Europe. And as you can see from this map, uh, this is just one consortium, which is uh, ES Tools, which is connecting many groups uh, all over Europe. So ES Tools uh, it began with a discussion I had with Austin Smith about European funding for uh, working with human embryonic stem cells. It takes many months uh, to organize and write a new research proposal which involves 15, 20 labs from all over Europe. Uh, basically, in this proposal, you have to put together all ideas so that uh, research becomes stronger and the proposal becomes more competitive. We fund these projects following uh, expert evaluation by independent reviewers so that we select the best projects in a fair way. Let me welcome you all here at uh, Covent Garden, our evaluation building for this uh, evaluation. Uh, as you have realized, uh, this is a briefing for, for three panels of the area of uh, 1.4. So after the briefing, uh, the groups uh, will split up. There was then um, a call from the European Union in, I think, 2004 for a project uh, to work on the functional genomics of human ES cell differentiation. Then you submit these uh, 100 pages and uh, for about six months uh, you are uh, floating in the air waiting for the scientific evaluation and for uh, Russell to decide. There can be even 20 applications, 20 proposals in competition against each other, but only one will win. We receive um, every year many, many applications, uh, and it is hard work to select the best proposals. Um, so we know we have a high quality of, of research funded. Um, we also uh, know that some scientists find the bureaucracy uh, a little bit burdensome, but with any application process, whether at national level or European level, there is a certain formality that you have to follow, and we believe that the uh, burden is more than compensated by the reward of working with the best uh, researchers in Europe uh, on exciting
challenges and uh, receiving significant funding to enable that. Proposals are evaluated on the computer system, but we still print some of them. You are not allowed to see the, the titles or the text. And, uh, and we have some copies available, so the evaluators can, can check any detail while discussing. If somebody says, oh, I don't like this proposal because it doesn't include clinical trials, and somebody goes, yes, in the page number four, uh, clinical trials were mentioned. excitement of moderating a panel and having 10 or 12 of the best scientists in Europe and, and maybe the world of a, of a given discipline or maybe a multidisciplinary panel where different experts from different disciplines uh, discuss together about a particular bunch of proposals. Only people who have been moderating this panel can understand the, the excitement. It seems boring, huh? a group of guys, middle-aged uh, men and women, uh, talking about science in a very strange jargon. And, uh, but they are deciding about a lot of money, a lot of effort put together by the people who wrote this, and they are deciding about the science of the future. Had you read these proposals, you would understand it's science fiction in our hands, and we can decide uh, making them real. And, and it's... Uh, really passionate thing. It's the best job I've ever had in my life. And then one day you open the email and you receive the decision. And uh, if the decision is positive, then that day you fly. Because that decision turns your 100 pages into a research consortium, which is a sort of uh, a transient uh, enterprise that includes the best scientists on that topic that will be working together for the next four or five years. It took quite a long time between putting the grant proposal together and actually getting it funded, partly because of the ethical issues and getting agreement uh, between different partners in Brussels about which cell lines could be used and how they could be used and so on. I'm responsible for all different aspects of the project cycle, as we call it. From submitting proposals, their evaluation, and you've been seeing that today, um, through to uh, the negotiation of contracts, successful ones, informing proposers who are unsuccessful as to what's happened uh, to their proposals, um, and then working out the um, details of the work plan with the coordinator, overseeing the project startup and then the project follow-up phase. Normally projects have a duration of three, four, sometimes even five years. The very first thing I was presented with was the, the contract between University of Sheffield as the coordinator of the ISTORPS Consortium and the European Commission. I was quite surprised. It was a, a contract for work, it had a schedule of deliverables, it had a Gantt chart to show the timing of the various stages of the project. These research consortia operate in a kind of industry style, adopting from industry also schemes for progress control, uh, which have been uh, well established over the years in industry, including milestones and deliverables. Typically in such a project we have up to seven or eight different work packages which concentrate on different areas in stem cell research. Every group thinks exactly what is the key expertise and then 
uh, associate with the work packages which are most suitable for this kind of expertise. moment, sì, 14.2 è stato consegnato perché l'abbiamo, ma non è stato messo online perché non c'è l'approvazione del coordinatore. Oggi ci sarà questa review periodica del, del work package, quindi si passa attraverso questo schema che si chiama SAT, si vede che stato è ogni report, se deve essere consegnato in breve tempo, se è in ritardo, se c'è qualche problema, se c'è qualche cosa che non può essere sviluppata in questo momento. Yes, I can hear you. Questo è per lei per dopo, World Package 2. Questo è un update che ho fatto adesso sulla nostra riunione 360 gradi. Without doubt, a well-managed project is going to be more successful scientifically. Capitalizing on those brilliant individuals and having them part of a team, then this becomes the role of the manager. C'è da modificare il consorzio agreement, un po' di lavoro ci sarà da fare dal tuo punto di vista. E possiamo discutere lì. 1 10 2 Sì. Posso scrivere le parole. Yeah. This is absolutely fine. Mm? We do not want to break any, any term and condition between we fear. All these groups have to report on, in regular intervals about their progress in the form of, of written reports which um, satisfy certain milestones which have been put up at the beginning of the project. There's a larger reports called deliverables which um, are usually um, substantial contributions to the field which are published in internationally uh, reviewed uh, uh, journals. Hello? Hi, I would like to talk to Mariah Lelosi. One, two, three. Yamanaka Sensei. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for, uh, for joining us. Hi, Valentina, can you hear me? And in addition, uh, the different groups uh, have to meet in person or via video conferencing in regular intervals to really maintain the dialogue uh, between these different cities. now and people can so I work as a science communicator um, which really means I suppose that I take science the real hardcore science that the scientists are doing in the lab and I convert it into information in all sorts of different formats for different people who might want to know about the science it's a nice job because it's a really varied job um, I have to understand the science which is sometimes quite hard um, but I also then have to think about who I'm trying to talk to and what they might want to know and what's important to them um, and how they communicate and 
the ideal scenario is that the, uh, the projects think about communicating uh, at the same time that they are doing the science, even before, when they are already planning the science, they can also plan what the communication is going to be about, because we need to tell the people what are we doing with their money and what are the results. So you can think of a triangle, technology, economy, science, and they influence each other. So if you take a too narrow view of science, just look at what people do at the lab, then you miss the important dimensions of the work of the scientists. Telescope stands for uh, trans-European learning on embryonic stem cells and debate opinion on policies in Europe. Um, and well, telescope also means, you know, like uh, uh, focus at a distance. And I think that fit very well with, with what it is. So the idea was to, um, to select uh, an audience um, that for me was an ideal audience for, for the embryonic stem cell pr uh, prospects. So it was the next generation of voters uh, all over Europe. So like late teenage, uh, early, early adulthood uh, people. And also, at this age, they are most likely to have the benefit of the future tra treatment that m may arise from the stem cell technology. If uh, we take stem cell research as an example, you can see over these years, I mean, even in the span of this project, four years, something happened. Uh, the discovery of iPS cells, which changed the scientific landscape, which also, of course, changed the ethics landscape. And if you are not taking these changes seriously, if you are not addressing the concerns that these changes bring about, then you will get stuck in a problem that has been very difficult for a long time. You have ethical theories, very abstract, in very thin air, high up near the ceiling, and you have the scientists working with their problems at the bench. And they these two never meet. Usually when you ask scientists, uh, especially young scientists, uh, what they are doing, they will start to tell you about a molecule that is active in, in some specific network of molecules and so on. Um, while for the general public it makes sense to say like, well, I'm working, trying to, to cure cancer. The other opportunity we had was at the final uh, international symposium that we set up to finish ES Tools in Lisbon when the, uh, a group from uh, Italy set up this stage production called Staminalia, which we rehearsed some of the, the concepts on, and issues behind working with embryonic stem cells and some of the social uh, attitudes to that. changed quite a lot in the last few years and they changed quite quickly actually and we've started to use a lot of new ways to communicate now with people um, so for example there's a lot more goes on on the web on the internet now that people have much more access to that and there are lots of new tools like Twitter Facebook YouTube um, there are some uh, amazing statistics about how people go to YouTube as their first place to get information you know young people these days really do that 
It can be sometimes quite a difficult thing to take a very specialist piece of science and uh, try to um, convert that into something that, say, a 14-year-old could understand or even an adult who's got no background at all in science. Um, but I think that's one of the fun and challenging things about my job. I mean, whatever mechanism you're using to communicate with them, to try and make them feel comfortable to ask questions and to, that you're also listening, not just telling, so it's a real conversation. For young scientists, there are some grants which are available for them to travel to another country and work in that country in a different laboratory uh, under very good conditions, uh, learn about new practices, uh, pursue their scientific career, develop their contacts with the, within the international scientific community. Within this European consortia, basically, you end up collaborating with people you have never collaborated with before. You meet them frequently with all young scientists from the different labs. They talk to each other, they plan experiments and exchanges. Most of the time you end up uh, with the results and with outcomes which are um, much more significant than the one you would have expected. And, um, and also with unexpected results just because there is the contribution of different point of view and of different expertise. All of this is something that is not really written in biology books, but it is so important for the science we do. The beautiful thing in the end is also when your young collaborators in the lab discover that the young scientists they are talking to now, from different labs, different cities, will be their future colleagues in science. I've been uh, very lucky um, to be part of a European consortium like the ES Tools and the Neurostem Cell Consortium because they have created uh, the background for um, establishing interaction with groups that have expertise in a specific field of stem cell research. I'm very happy that this has led to very positive results also for my own studies. Thank you.